Seven. Great to see my game at GDQ. Enjoy and keep donating. That was a $15 donation. And with that, we are now ready for the Chicken of the Farm run by Zarnax42. Hey, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Really excited that all of the pieces of technology between me and you uh, finally came together to let us bring you the hottest new speed game of 2020, Chicken of the Farm. With me are Angry Larry, uh, who helped introduce me to this game through his Elite series, and Mitch 3A and Link777, the developers of the game. Uh, I think we should probably just dive right into it, and and we can we can start talking about it because nobody knows what this is yet. I'm pretty sure there's a couple people. But anyway, we are going to be going in three, two, one, go. All right, hey, this is Link Sevens. Uh, this is a game which 3A and I developed. We, uh, we developed this for the 2018 NestDev competition. Uh, it took us about five and a half months, basically at the end of 2018, and uh, we released it in January 2019. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see Zarnax here hit quite a few frame perfects in this category. We can talk about category and the mix of that stuff later. How did you feel the development process went, Mitch? I'm Mitch. Oh no! Yeah, so this this game has, a, I think, what you'd call a pretty high skill cap. Um, basically, there are a number of frame-perfect tricks to get the, the high jumps required for this 100% category. And then there are a bunch of optional ones that just save little bits of time. Arnax will go for a few of them, and some of them are a little risky. Won't go for... not really worth. Oh, this jump. This jump uh, is doubly stage, killer. The stage he's climbing here is a, a little risky, because uh, I can talk about the category. 100% there are these little uh, poorly drawn flies and you have to collect all of them for 100%. And uh, if you if you miss and then hit the portal in that stage, uh, you can really have to game over or reset to get... Okay. That one stage in particular is really nasty because those darts can knock you... The knockback can send you into the portal. So once you, that key is in the way to pick up the flies, so you really need to be careful to avoid the portal. And once we get into World 2 here, this is 2-1, uh, has the last of the secret bunnies or flies that you have to get. Uh, it introduces ice physics, so these hidden blocks are uh, slick. You gotta watch yourself. But it's one of the things when you do 100% is you have to know about it first because World 1-1 one, one, and 1-2, one, along with 2-1, have the, the bunny way up top that you have to get. Uh, and you most of the time the run is spoiled when you're watching it for the first time because <laughs> uh, you didn't know that that would be a thing. And there it is. A couple places here where Zarnax has to be careful um, getting all the keys first, opening a portal, not getting the fly beforehand and accidentally triggering the portal will ruin the run. You can use your tongue as a weapon you can lash it out at the darts and kind of help yourself out, not take some damage as well. Um, there is a strat here where 
Zarnax could have taken an intentional death on this stage. You'll restart at the same stage with full health. If you game over, you go back to the beginning of the world, world whatever you are on, dash one. And in a couple places where these birds show up, they will always spawn. They are, they're infinite. As long as you kill one, it will respawn after a while. They kind of double up. So on the top of this board, you kind of have to be careful because you have to lash twice to kill them both. But so far, so good. We're on the last of the world uh, levels here on World 2. You have to be a little bit careful because of the ice physics, but you can kind of jump across and collect all the keys. But you have to do these super jumps. And Tarnax is going to show it off again, running across all the ice platforms on the bottom. That was a really bad the death. Yeah, the super jump mechanic, uh, Link 7's here, that you have to do. Uh, why don't you explain that a little bit? Yeah, we, we can talk about the physics a bit. So we, when we wrote the physics, what kind of turned into a, a side effect, uh, you know, if you watch closely, there's no, there's no real walking. You're a frog. You can hop and you can jump. And uh, you can, uh, to make the controls seem good, you can jump as long as you're still moving up. So you can get a little extra height if you, you hop first and then jump. Uh, it, the way it ended up is if you, if you jump on the last frame of that hop, you get an, just enough height to hit a, a four tile jump. And uh, that's required in a number of places category. The trouble is if you you're late and you fall, there there are places where you falling into a pit or you losing height and that's kind of Alright, but the big question here is I see we're a frog and we're collecting uh, and trying to find secret bunnies. But why is it called chicken of the farm? Yeah, so that's a good, uh, a, it's kind of a, a, a Chinese joke. So if you notice the, the Chinese on the, the title screen, the literal translation there is field chicken or chicken of the farm. Uh, but it's a, it's a Chinese word for frog. The frog is the chicken of the farm, sort of like tuna is the chicken of the sea. I mentioned uh, in so my this... uh, in my submission for this game that it was designed with speedrunning in mind, and, and I really think that's true. The uh, the mechanics and the physics just make every jump, every movement, like the amount of the number of frames you're holding A or left or right will have an impact on a lot of these stages. Uh, so the skill cap, like Link said, is super high and. And yeah, my the variance in runs, whether you're in a good rhythm and hitting things, is it's just massive. I've had practice runs anywhere from under nine minutes to over fourteen. <laughs> and you will have to play it to get a feel for it, and I do recommend that everyone does check it out. Is there a way that they can easily find this game link? Yeah, so this game is available several places. We released it for free on romhacking.net. Uh, you can also find the uh, the GitHub for it. It's uh, it's out there on GitHub. So if you wanted to, to learn some nest programming or just look at how it was done, you can see the source for the game. Oh, uh, and then the the nest dev uh, has a has a really great community and you know forum and Discord and it's be active and people answer answer questions and are really helpful there which is great and then uh they've they've compi compiled a number of homebrew games from these competitions and stuff uh chicken of the farm is in a action 53 uh multi multi-game cart action 53 version 4 as a itch itch io page uh, they're also, they're going to be making actual carts of it that I think will be available ordering very shortly. And you basically check this out. Yeah, and you do have to get a feel for the game to, to understand that how well Zarnax is doing some of these jumps here. These platforms that are kind of blinking, they're not really moving even though they look like they're shrinking at times. 
And that was actually, I did a number of, uh, of development streams and amount of the development on stream. And this was actually a, a viewer suggestion. You see the, the flashing is, uh, changes speeds. It's actually tied to your health, so it flashes faster as you lose health and kind of adds to adds to the anxiety. And that was actually a, a viewer suggestion I was making by GT. And we're coming up on the final level here. That was the last of the flies or secret bunnies, whatever you want to call them. And uh, here's our boss fight. Shocker! Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Time comes up uh, when the screen starts fading after I enter this last portal. Time. It's a pretty good job, man. Thanks. Does uh, I'm not actually looking at the stream. Nice run. Does anyone have the actual time? 9.32 or so? Sub 10, I am very, very, very happy with. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great time. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, for all of you coming to help commentate, um, let me focus on the run. Um, I need one special shout out to Yogi the Monk, uh, who Link had run this game fairly recently, and I stole a lot of his strats. We went too fast for me to, to be able to point out each one, but uh, thanks for those. <laughs> and and of course, thanks to GDQ for giving me the opportunity to showcase this game. Really, the the star of this show was Link and Mitch. Um, they they put this game together. It's a really really fun speed run. Highly recommend taking a look. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks so much. And thank you, Zarnex, for that fantastic run of Chicken of the Farm. I have here, uh, in recognition of that, a 75 donation from Stevo18 saying, Hey, Zarnex, imagine my surprise seeing you running as Val and I are getting up this morning. So happy to see you doing what you do best. Stay fantastic. All the love from us. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Uh, as we prepare for an upcoming interview with Feasel and Dragon Dark, we will run a quick Twitch ad. See you in a few minutes.
It's good to give Dragon Dark some time to prep. Ah, see, that was your first mistake. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Next on the docket, we have an interview of Dra oh, sorry. Go for it. Okay. Well, sorry. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we have next on the docket an interview with Dragon Dark prior to their legacy of the Wizard Run, but with Feasel. Take it away. Hello, everybody. I am here with Dragon Dark, who will be running Legacy of the Wizard about 30 minutes from now after Micro Mages. So, Dragon Dark, 21 GDQ runs that you've done overall. I think that makes you one of the most prolific GDQ runners. Do you think all that experience is going to give you, you know, extra confidence for this run, or is this just a game you've practiced so much that that doesn't even matter? Um, it's like basically any GDQ run I've done. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just used to it at this point. Like, I don't, I did some practice last night. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, I did a couple practice runs this morning just to warm up. And like, like this is, this is just nothing new for me at this point. <laughs> Yeah, how about this game in particular? Um, you've run this only once before, but uh, you know you've run Metroid Zero Mission a bunch of times. Like, how does this compare to you know as far as the difficulty, as far as the challenge of doing this in a marathon run to some of the other runs you've done? Um, this one is very difficult compared to a lot of other ones because um, there's some very precise RNG manipulation I have to do, and if my movements aren't like perfect you lose the manipulation you lose a lot of time in some cases it's actually faster to just reset so i'm actually going to be relying so this is actually one of the games that i um will be commentating a lot less myself and letting my commentators handle it um while i'm trying to handle the tricky stuff yeah so let's let's talk a little bit about sort of the the evolution of this speedrun route this game has changed quite a bit the last time you ran this in a marathon was sgdq 2012 so eight years ago was the last time you did this what do you remember about that that last run uh i remember we barely understood manipulation at that point and um the route was completely different back then we started with a different character we did the areas in a different order um we only had manipulation at the very start uh and just so much has been discovered since that point the time has dropped like four like I think we're down five minutes now from what the record was back then. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, 
it's such a different run nowadays um and it's so much more technical because we're not it's not so much it's not as rng dependent as it used to be um where mm -hmm. we were relying on scroll drop we're just relying on luck to get this the uh the speed scrolls now it's a lot of it is manipulated and we're able to get like very very fast speeds which allows us to do some things that we couldn't do before yeah, if I remember correctly, um, back then we were just sort of starting to understand how the speed scrolls worked and we noticed, you know, patterns at the very beginning of the game. If I remember correctly, the thing that really broke it wide open was when, uh, I think it was a Japanese runner, we uh, had a video that they'd posted which showed um, them clearing the RNG state by going into the password screen. Was that really the thing that kind of, you know, the watershed moment for this game? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, somebody had act. I, I don't even remember where the like. Somebody pointed me to that video, and I don't even remember. I don't remember who it was, and I don't know who the runner actually was. But just watching that video, it's like, wait a minute, they're getting a lot of scrolls. This looks intentional. And then every time they went into the password screen, it's like, oh, well, let me mess with this a little bit. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. So this is. <laughs> Yeah, right. I remember seeing like a Nico, I think it was posted on Nico video or something like that and with no context in any language that we understood and it was just, uh, you know, it was really confusing or like this is just a ridiculous amount of speed scrolls, like how is this even happening? Yeah, that, it, it, I, do, I do recall it being on Nico and having to um, install a program to even be able to watch the video at the time. Right, <laughs> right, right. But yeah, that's so, Go ahead. But yeah, that, that manipulation just kind of broke the run completely wide open. So uh, now that you've, uh, like, you first started running this game a very long time ago, in the, the mid-2000s, I would say, or late 2000s, I think, is when I first saw a run of the game. Uh, and since then, uh, we rely a lot less on luck and a lot more on manipulation. But as you said, the manipulation is very difficult and, you know, almost frame perfect in some cases. Do you think that that's made the run a lot more demanding, or do you actually think it's made you enjoy the run more because now you don't have to worry about random luck, you know, spoiling your runs? Um, I think I like running it more in terms of grinding it because there's a lot less there's a lot less RNG to it, but at the same time, it be, it's become a lot more reset heavy. Mm -hmm. um, because if I miss any of the manips, I need to, I mean, if I'm going for like a record attempt, if I miss any of the manips, I have to reset. It's, I'm going to lose too much time from not getting them. Um, whereas older routes that relied on luck, you would just keep going in hopes of, okay, well, I lost some time here because I didn't get a scroll drop like I did my previous run, but maybe I'll get a couple in the next area. It'll make up for it. So it's more demand. It's, so it's more fun to grind because now a lot more is within my control. Um, but it's a lot. It's a lot much. It's much more reset heavy. If I'm like actually doing like real record attempts. All right. Well, let's hope in this uh, upcoming run you do manage to get all the scroll manipulations. I think you've had plenty of practice with it. I'm sure you'll do just fine at it. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted to thank you very much for chatting with me here, and um, I want to wish you the best of luck on your run. Ah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'll be looking forward to it. Uh, so you can all catch Legacy of the Wizard coming up in about 30 minutes. For now, though, stay tuned for Micro Mages being run by White Hat 94.
Get it. Thank you, Dragon Dark, for being the interviewee and Fiesel for being the interviewer. I know I am looking forward to that Legacy of the Wizard run later today. Uh, we are almost ready for White Hat 94's Micro Mages run. And so while we get ready for that, here are a few more donations. This is a $25 donation from Pancakes145 saying, let's see if we can get that expert mode. What Pancakes is referring to is the donation incentive to upgrade the Power Blade difficulty from normal to expert. And last I checked, we, are, um, we were a mere $200 away from meeting that incentive. So let's see what we can do. Uh, 